to tie a popular hopper pattern today. This is called the Joe's Hopper. Originally, this pattern was called a Michigan Hopper. It was created by Art Winnie back in the 1920s, but Joe Brooks in the 1950s made it very popular. Don't know if the Art Winnie version is a little different than this, but this is uh, the version that Joe Brooks did. It's a fairly quick fly to tie, uh, simple materials. There's a couple of different ways that you can do the wing on this that I'll show you, uh, but it's for terrestrial season. And if you like throwing hoppers around along the grass and along the banks and so on, uh, this is a, a very good productive and fun fly to tie. That's the Joe's Hopper. We'll go ahead and get started. start Joe's Hopper by placing my hook in the vise. This is a Mustad 9672 or the new number is an R74. This is a size 8. You could use a lighter wire hook if you want to, uh, but I prefer a little bit sturdier hook for uh, fishing terrestrials. For, I'll go ahead and debarb the hook. For thread, I'm using a Danville. This is a 6 aught in black. I'm going to attach my thread behind the eye of the hook. I'm going to run my thread down the length of the shank. This is just to give it a nice little thread base, a little bit more traction as I'm tying in materials. I'm going to go just past the point of the hook. Then I'll tie in my tail. Tail is just some red hackle fibers. I'm using a Chinese neck. This is just a red Chinese neck. I'm going to strip away the fluff off the bottom of this. And then I'll go ahead and remove the fibers from one side of this. If I can get enough in the first or off just one side, that's fine. That's a little sparse to me. And that's just my preference. If you if you like it uh, a little bit sparser, that's fine. If you are using like a, a Whiting's American rooster or something like that, you'll probably get enough off in just one off of one side of that feather to Get the bulk that you're looking for in the tail. So I'm going to measure that about a little more than a half a shank length maybe. Tie that in. Just want a little kind of a red tag at the back end of this fly. Wrap my thread down the end of the shank. I'm going to tie in the hackle. For the body hackle um, on this, generally any brown a uh, hackle will do like a Chinese neck would do fine, or even just a small uh, dry fly rooster neck or something like that. I'm using these are some woolly bugger uh, hackles from a whiting bugger pack. The hackles on the body really aren't as important because they get trimmed off. So I'm going to take that hackle and Get the fluff off the bottom of it, tie that in. And then I'm going to tie in the body. For the body, the original Joe's Hopper, the body was a yellow wool. You could use a wool on this if you want. The thing about uh, when this fly was popular back in the 50s, when Joe Brooks made it more popular, as well as when Art Winnie created the fly back in the 20s, they didn't have synthetic, you know, Antron yarn or polypropylene yarn or anything like that. So generally it was wool. 
even if you're going to use, say, a polypropylene yarn or something like this, because this is a terrestrial and you want it on the surface, you're going to use some sort of a dry fly floatant on it. Because even though it's a synthetic, like, say, an Antron uh, body or something like that, it's going to get fish slime on it. It's going to get uh, pollen and surface dust and things like this on it that are going to eventually drag it down. So you're going to want to put some sort of float on it. I'm using just a an Antron yarn. This is, you know, bought from the craft store. I mostly got it for the color, but it's an Antron, so it's a, not Antron, I'm sorry, it's an acrylic yarn. So it's 100% synthetic. You could use, like I said, an Antron, or you can use a polypropylene yarn, something like that if you want to, even a polyester, it's, it's up to you. It, the body itself doesn't need to be all that thick. So this is just, uh, it's about a three strand yarn. You could separate those if you want to, to make it a little bit thinner on a smaller hook. I'm going to wrap those down onto the hook shank as I work my way up to the front of the body. I don't get too hung up on making certain this is, you know, really nice and 100% smooth because the, the yarn will pretty much smooth it all out. I'm going to stop with my thread about a quarter of the way or anywhere from a quarter of the way down the hook shank to a third of the way down the hook shank. This is where the body's going to end, and then we'll end up putting in the hackle in the front. So I'll just take my body, wrap that in, and then I'll apply the hackle. It's kind of a rib, as you'll see, but it's just going to go in and open spiral wraps. The hackle will, and it'll It'll go in in about five wraps. Barbs on the hackle is not important, as I said, for the body. That's why you can use a uh, just a cheap dry fly neck hackle or Chinese neck hackle or something. These are a little bit softer, maybe. If you want something stiffer like in a dry fly, you can certainly do that. But these are all going to get trimmed, and so that's why the length of these barbs really isn't a factor in the the feather that you choose for the body hackle. I'm going to tidy all of this up just a little bit. When you're trimming this away, different people have different um, opinions or preferences how they like to do this. The original that I'm aware of basically trimmed the sides off a little bit shorter than the top and the bottom. So that's what we're going to do. I think the idea is that the, these trimmed off are going to give the impression of legs underneath the, the grasshopper. So I just go in and trim the two sides and I keep those fairly close. Then I'll trim off the top and make that just a little bit longer and the bottom. Some people will trim these off really, really close to the body. That's up to you. I'm certain that they still are very, very effective. You want to stroke your fingers over that a little bit. Sometimes you'll get a hackle that, like these right here, somehow got bound down in and then they pop out. 
So you want to just kind of rub your fingers over it a little bit just to make certain you don't have any of those hidden in there that will pop out. So as you can see, I have the sides, both the sides a little bit shorter than the bottom and the top here. Now we're ready for the wing. This really is a pretty straightforward and simple hopper pattern. Now, the wing that I'm going to use here is some turkey quill. And that means it's not like a tail feather. This is a turkey flight feather that I'm going to use here. I've got a left and a right. You can, if you want to, you can put some uh, flex cement on these to make them a little bit more rigid and hold together. As a matter of fact, I would recommend that you take the time to do that simply because it they will hold up a little bit longer when you're fishing them. I want to get two slips that are uh, about the uh, width of the gap of the hook. I'm going to tie these in a little bit different rather than matching the tips in and having them together as I would say on a wet fly. I want these to kind of be more on the sides of the body as opposed to on, the, on laying on the top. So I'm going to hold them next to each other with the matching up the tips here. And I'm going to place these up on top here. I want the tips to go back about to the bend of the hook. I'm going to place them up on top here and then I'm just going to fold them down. I'm just going to gently push down on the sides fold them together so they actually kind of come together around the body. A little pinch and loop, get half a dozen wraps in to take a look and see how those are holding together. Yeah, see that's that's where that comes apart a little bit because they don't have any flex cement on that. We'll try that again. You know, if you're not happy with it, go ahead and just undo it and we'll tie it in again. I think if your wing ends up a little bit up on top here, that's fine. The idea, this is just a little wing case on it, so it doesn't have to be, you don't necessarily want it like a wet fly. Like I said, you kind of want it around on both sides of the body a little bit more. Once we get those in, I'm going to clean this up. And then we're ready to tie in our hackle. Before I tie in the hackle, I do want to show you an alternative to doing the wings on these. There's a number of different hopper patterns that will actually uh, do the wings like I'm going to show you here. So I'm going to secure this with a quick whip finish. And then I'm going to come back to this and we'll finish our actual fly for the video because I have another, we got a brown hackle right there. I have another body already made here and ready for a wing. And I want to show you an alternative to doing kind of a matched wing with the turkey like I just did is to use some turkey tail. What you do is you take the turkey tail like this, put some flex cement on both sides of it, come in and we'll cut about the same width as the gap of the hook. Peel that off, 
And then I can often get two enough out of here for two of them, but I'm just going to go ahead and do one. I'm going to trim that away. So now I basically have a nice stiff slip of turkey tail, both sides. Uh, it's nice and stiff with that flex cement on there. I shouldn't say stiff, it is flexible, but I mean it's more rigid and held together better. What you can do is you can round the end of this off if you want. I find it just as well to go ahead and just put a little point on it. Like I said, there's a number of hopper patterns out there that and uh, other terrestrial patterns out there that this is how they do the little wing case on it. Get them more or less even. I'm being probably more fussy with this than I need to be. And then you're going to just place this on top. Again, the tip's going to go back about the bend of the hook and kind of push that down, roll it around on top, and then put in a number of turns to secure it. Make certain it's nice on top, straight down the back. That one's off to the side just a little bit. Not that I think the fish are going to care that much, but we do want to take a little care in these. So this is a nice little alternative to messing with um, you know matched wings if you some people are uncomfortable doing that they just have a hard time for whatever the reason a little more difficult but this at least will get you pretty much the same effect of having a wing case or outer wing over the uh, the body and then we're ready for a hackle on that to finish that Keep in mind, you do want to make certain you have at least a quarter of the hook shank, if not about a third of the hook shank. Um, that's where your hackle is going to go to. So here is our fly that we're working on. We got some brown hackles over here too. Got some mixed in with that tail. I'm just going to leave those, otherwise, I'm going to be cutting out a lot of the tail. I think that will be just fine. So, our wing is in. I'll reattach my thread here. I do want to make certain that this area right behind the eye of the hook is fairly smooth. I don't want any drop-offs or ledges or anything like that so that when I'm wrapping that hackle in, I don't have to worry about it slipping along that uh, the hook shank there. Hackle for this is going to also be a um, uh, one of those long hackles from the bugger pack. The barbs you want to make them, uh, I like them a little bit more, maybe one and a half times the gap of the hook, but they are going to get shorter as you go up to the front, but that's fine. I'm going to tie that in, securing that down, bring my thread down to the eye of the hook. Grab that hackle with my hackle pliers. And we'll start wrapping that in. Nice thing about these hackles, you generally don't have to stroke them back as you come around. Just take your time with it. They'll all wrap in really nice and smooth. Each wraps right in front of the other one. 
I will stroke these back a little bit just to make certain I'm not trapping any barbs pointing forward. I'm going to wrap that right down up next to the eye of the hook. A few wraps to secure it. I'll trim away the excess. Stroking all those hackles back, I'll go ahead and make the head of the fly does not have to be very big or pronounced, just kind of cleans it up a little bit. And then I'll put in a five or six turn whip finish. These barbs can get kind of squished backwards a little bit from, you know, sweeping them back, making the head. So just preen those back forward a little bit. Once this gets wet and dries, they'll all kind of pop back out anyway. A little bit of head cement. And our Joe's hopper is complete. Like I said, it's a pretty straightforward, uh, simple fly. If you don't want to mess with the matched wings on that, you can uh, just use the turkey tail, as I showed. It's a little bit quicker, a little easier, but it's just a fun fly. I mean, it's a very popular terrestrial pattern, quick and easy to do. You can do this in multiple different colors. This is a nice thing also. I've got a few of them here. I'll show you. This one is uh, an orange body. And this one has the turkey tail wing on that. This one is another orange body, but this is a matched wing. And then I've also done some in green. This one also is a nice green antron yarn with the turkey uh, turkey tail wing case on it and this one is a green one with the matched turkey so quick and easy hopper pattern good for terrestrial season Good for, you know, trout as well as warm water species. That is the Joe's Hopper. Hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for joining me at the Vice today. I hope you learned at least a new pattern, if not a new technique, maybe a tip or trick here and there. If you have any questions about this fly or any of the techniques used in constructing this pattern, please leave them in the comments section down below. If you go to the trouble to ask a question, I'll go to the trouble to answer it. If you'd like to help Dressed Irons, please share this video with your friends and anybody you think that might enjoy this pattern. Until next time, remember, it's fly tying. If you're not having fun, then you're doing it wrong.